Uh, certainly your papers have different emphases, uh, looking at the same realities uh, from different perspectives. Without wanting to um, short circuit any discussion of differences among you, might I ask each of you um, if you could single out um, a point or two from each other's papers uh, that you would most want to second um, or agree with from that. Um, and so either, either of you can begin with that question, but a point or two that you would, you would um, second from the, from the other person's paper. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to second almost everything in um, that paper, that into very fine, mic. oh, into the mic. Is it, is it on? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I'm happy to second almost everything in that paper. Uh, at different emphases, as you say. I, I actually don't want to say that there are, n there are no, uh, there's no reforms that can happen at the level of the political. It's just that that's more symptomatic than it is at the theological roots of the crisis. And so, in a way, I think um, I can affirm just about everything that um, Professor Gallardi has to say and then say, but I think somebody with the orange tie from New Orleans uh, was here who asked about what contribution does systematic theology have to offer. I think this is at least a start, uh, a beginning reply to that question that was asked. What kind of, what kind of contribution um, does systematic theology have to make? Well, in one sense, I think we actually have to pay attention to how we form uh, seminarians in, in theological uh, reflection in a way where the, the theological views fit uh, our worship. Uh, and uh, I, I, I really do see a lot of, of the kind of theologian as dissent, dissenter. Uh, the theologian as dissenter was almost a, a stereotype of the theologian from the 70s and 80s um, that was inevitably going to show up uh, at, in terms of how people were formed. Um, it, uh, but in no way do I think it's uh, instead of paying attention to political reforms, which Professor Gallardi has rightly spoken about. Thank you. Um, we took such significantly different approaches, so I, I want to think a little bit about this, and uh, I have tremendous respect for Professor Pecknold's speculative skills and reading of the history of theology. I would probably take issue with certain aspects of it, but I would agree with him that um, there is a danger of a certain theological sloppiness uh, that has pastoral and ecclesial consequences. And I certainly am in sympathy with at least certain elements of his critique of some moves that have been made in post-conciliar theology. Uh, I actually have a considerable sympathy with his concern about a, a too easy move to embrace divine passibility, which I think is often well-intentioned, but has significant negative consequences for the life of the church. And so there are, certainly are elements of his critique uh, there in terms of kind of disciplined reflection on the doctrine of God that are worthy of our uh, further exploration. I think I'll stop there.